In Creo Parametric, you can export intermediate data format or IDF files so that your electrical engineers can see the mechanical work that you've been doing and then you can import new IDF files based on the work that the electrical engineers perform in their ECAD software. Let's take a look at how to do that. Here I am in an assembly model. I have a board assembly. I want to export this to my electrical engineers. So let's start off by opening up in its own separate window. To export this file, you'll go to File, Save As, and then Save a Copy. And then I'm going to choose from the type list the format of the file that I want to use. Here is ECAD IDF. You'll notice that the file extension is .emn. Let's select it. And then we have the name of the object. You can change the file name if you want. I will click the OK button. This will open up a dialog box. At the top of the dialog box, you could choose the format of the IDF file that you want to use. You could export in a format for the board station software application or IDF 2.0, the older standard, or IDF 3.0. And here we have the board area. Right now it is set to export the board. We can select it and change the export status. Let me click on the yes. And so you can toggle that. Similarly with the component placement, it will list all the different components and their reference designator as well as the locating coordinate system. You can select any of these different entities and then change the export status if you do not want to export that in the IDF file. Let's change it so that everything is listed as yes. That's good. Let's click the OK button. And that way we have successfully exported our data and then we can exchange that with our electrical engineers. Next, let's take a look at importing new IDF data. Before I do that, though, I notice that in my board part, I still have the display of a number of my ECAD areas, including keep in and keep out regions. Let's control that visibility. I will go to my layers and then let me use the drop down list to change to the layers for the board part. It has no layers. Let's create a new layer and I will call it my ECAD layer. Then we'll go to the Rules tab. I'm going to turn on Options Independent, Options Associative, and then Edit Rules. And the easy way to grab all the different ECAD areas is to search for entities by type and the type equal to cosmetic. If I preview the results, you can see that we have our Keep In, Keep Out, and also our place regions, routes, our via keep outs. Let's click the OK button and then OK. Now I can hide this layer and let's save status so that the next time that we open up Creo Parametric, those ECAD areas will not be visible. All right, let's close the layers dialog box. Now to bring in new data, we'll go to the Get Data Overflow menu. Here is the import command. And the first time going through here, we have an EMN file that we will use. And actually, before I even do this, let me show you a config.pro option that you can use to import actual Creo Parametric CAD models. Let me go to File, Options, and then Options. And I'll go to my Configuration Editor. Let's add an option. I'm going to search for the name. I know that ECAD underscore and let me hit the find button i'm looking for an option called ecad mapping scroll down the list ecad mapping file here is the option and you want to you can set it to a file that is called ecad hint dot map and that'll have the list of corresponding model names for a reference designator from the ecad side Let's choose the open button and then add change and then close out of here and cancel out of there and then OK. And so now when I bring in an EMN file, let's go to the get data overflow and then import. Now I'll choose the next one from my electrical engineers. 
I'll choose this one and then use the import button. And by doing that, it automatically is going to know which components match up with which different coordinate systems. And I get this ECAT data and I might not be sure what exactly my electrical engineers changed. I can see that from the status column, all of the objects exist. Let's check the option to investigate the placement. When you check the option to investigate the placement, also investigate geometry becomes available. Now I will click the OK button and it's prompted me to select a profile's name file. Well, let's find the appropriate one. Let me choose the import button. And so now it says that it wants to replace one component for the relay with another one. If I choose change status, you'll notice that goes back to the original location. The status here is now set to keep. Let's change status once more. Shows the new location. I am happy with that. Let's click the OK button. And that is good for the first one. Now let's say that some more time goes on. We have some more updates from our electrical engineers. Let's import another one. We'll do get data import. And then for the next one, let's say that there is a revision. Let's hit the import button. And again, we've got our list of objects in here. And once again, we can investigate the placement and investigate the geometry. I will click the OK button. And once again, we're prompted for a profiles file. And in this case, I have a new profiles file. Let's use the import button. And you can see that we got a bunch of new components. And we have from the investigate component dialog box, we have five objects listed with a different status. And so, by the way, you can use this filter drop down list if you want to limit the number of objects that are listed in here. Instead of listing everything, which is change, missing, and new components, you could do just changed and missing, change and new, missing and new, so forth and so on. And so we have this capacitor with reference designator C22. Its status is set to replace. What that means is that it will update the placement of the original component, C22. And again, if we choose change status, you can see that, okay, here it was over there. Then we can change status and see that it is moving over here. Then we have C23. This is a brand new component. By the way, be aware there is color coding for the different components that are showing up. So in this case, we have a magenta color indicating that this is a new component. And with the status except new, it means that we're actually going to add it in here. Once more, we change status. It will end up rejecting that particular component. It will not be added. Let me choose that one. And then we have a relay component. We can see it highlighted to change the component placement. Again, if I change status, okay, that's where it originally was, but it would end up interfering with a couple of resistors. And here we have one resistor and then another resistor, and we will accept those new components. Again, you could choose to reject the placement of those components instead. And so that's good. Let's click the OK button. And now we have our new components added in the model and the locations of some other components changed. Next up, again, let's say that some more time passes. Maybe we change the placement of some components, send that information via IDF to our electrical engineers, and we get another IDF file back. Let's read that one in. Let's go to get data and then import. And let's grab this EMN file. Here we have the dialog box. And so we see that a number of objects exist in terms of the different reference designators because of our mapping file. So that's good. And it knows what coordinate system to use. Let's investigate placement and investigate geometry. By the way, there is an option here to open up a log window, but personally, I never do that. Let's click the OK button. And now again, it prompts us for our profiles file. Let's select the appropriate one. Now we have a whole bunch more components that were populated 
from our electrical engineers. We can see that we can list the status in here, except new. All those different components are shown in Magenta, and you can see the long list over on the dialog box. If I select one and again change status, well, I can see that there is a little component over here that went away. Let's take a look at another one and then change status. Okay, just a little resistor over there was going away. So again, you can investigate to see which of the different components would end up being added or removed from the model. Let's just do one more. Okay, I was trying to get one of these big chips over here, but I'm not sure what the appropriate reference designator is for those. And so we have our long list, and so we have accept new. And you can see when I was changing the status, instead of accept new, it could choose to reject the placement of that particular component. Also down in the list, we have keep missing. So what this means is that in our IDF file update, these particular components did not appear in that IDF file. So they're missing from the IDF file, but we're choosing to keep them in our board assembly. If we select one of those objects and then change status, well, now it will delete that component that was missing from the latest IDF file. Let's change the status again so it brings the component back. I'm happy with everything. And so now we can choose the OK button and we've got our board populated with all those other additional components. So that's how you can export an IDF file and then import updates to the IDF data. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.